Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Yes, our long anticipated wait has finally come to an end. Yes, Candy and the Gang or Candy and the LOG, however you want to see them. They finally came through with their opening of their new show. And child baby wanted to tell you the first off when it was giving me my first 30 minutes I was like this shit ain't you know <laughs> but then I had to get my creative thinking hat on and I'm like wait a minute baby wait a minute we cannot judge this show too harshly because it just came on and just because they didn't give us the drama that I was looking for. And maybe, you know, I was just too hyped because Portia had bought out her show. And I don't know. I was I was just going for the one-two punch TKO you know, technical knockout of a show. And I had to get back into my normal way of thinking. Like, wait a minute. This is a new show. She's just introducing it to us. She's introducing her cast. And Dominique seemed like, child, she ain't nothing but a drunk hoe. A, a drinker and a hoe. And Don Juan is just his fabulous self as usual. And he don't understand why. He keep getting looped up in Candace's little venture she want to go on. And he got to fuss with Todd here and there. And I was there for it. <laughs> I was like, get in his ass, Don Juan. Okay. And then my three beautiful ladies, I tell you. <sighs> If any one of them pass anytime soon, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to miss them like they were my family members. Because I was, you know, looking at them from when they first came in the scene, on on the scene with Ken and she had her first spin off. And just looking how vital and, and, and outspoken they was and stuff. And now, when I got a chance to see them tonight on the show... It was just showing how fragile they have become and that like damn i'm gonna miss them if they leave this earth anytime soon or in the future a little way ahead of time i'm gonna be sad just like if they were my own aunts or um my own relatives i was looking at aunt bertha and i think they said she was in her 80s or 80 and mama george she's 72 and uh, Miss Aunt Nora, she's in her 80s. And really, the one that's truly showing age and, and fra um, the fragileness is Aunt Bertha. And I was like, damn, we don't live forever, do we, y'all? It's just like I had that mora uh, uh, mortality type um, thought come in my head that we're not here forever. And it just made me think about my... Um, deceased aunt who died when she was 78 unexpectedly and i was sad for a moment i was like oh my goodness you know they we have rocked with these seasoned ladies and we like their um nonsense type of ways that they you know carried their uh characters and demeanor on the show and they didn't take shit from nobody or anything they were just themselves but that man he need to really get with the um he really need to get with the um aunts and and have a sit down because he's just living life too i don't know i was like don Juan, can you talk to him i know everything need to be on point and you know need to be tightened up but he just like you said got a well you didn't say it i think it was brandon who said he had to stick up his ass or something like that and i'm like oh candy you need to send him back to blaze steak well blaze and steakhouse seafood whatever y'all got out there with blaze baby blaze name on it y'all need to say him back Ooh, excuse me y'all because it's almost 11 o'clock and I'm sitting up and trying to do a review for you all and myself, okay? Because I did get a little chuckle here. And his name, I think his name is, um, shoot, what is his name? Um, golly, Rashad, Rashad, that was baby Rashad, honey. He normally comes from Blaze Steakhouse. He's over there and can, I guess, I don't know if she's trying to get rid of Shandrika 
or she trying to put her on notice that she can't be replaced or something but he was over there trying to get to know the place and this that and the third and he said he was getting uh wasn't getting paid uh the same rate he was getting paid at um blazing steakhouse i would say uh um -uh, can we need to have a sidebar because you want me to come and bring some class and some upscale dressing and and mannerism over here to the hood honey you gonna have to pay me my same rate so i'm like uh rashad you need to just have a proper conversation with uh can and say uh uh you're gonna pay me mileage or something because i live on the other side where you know your steakhouse is that i do real well at and you love me at that place and if you're trying to have me bring some of my flashiness over here and try to upscale um uh, this country bunking place you call you know in the south eatery or whatever uh trying to match it like popos with a other uh black side uh, uh expression uh, you gonna have to pay me my same pay and i need mileage that's what i would have had that conversation with candy okay because she ain't gonna make no fool out of me all right making all this money on this show being televised and all that i mean i may get picked up by some entrepreneur want me to be a spokesperson or something else but you know it just is what it is if i if it were if i were short that's what i would have told her we really didn't get a chance to see um melvin her cousin that she pretty much have been uh raising and keeping him afloat uh because i think his dad's in prison or something his dad died or something like that we didn't see um patrick this um episode but i'm sure he's gonna be coming that's aunt bertha's uh grandchild which she calls him ain't he ain't but a hoe okay he he got the looks got the style and he don't know how to just care one woman so that was a mess so pretty much the show was really about showcasing chandrika which is the girl in the um fuchsia pink and i think his name is brian he was i forgot what they said he was um, I had to go through my notes, but I think he was a, a hostess or a greeter as well. And uh, no, I don't know what his name was. Shit, I don't, I don't forgot. Things were going a little bit too fast and a little too slow. But um, we have a well, maybe with Brian. That Brian is the ex bartender. Yeah, he's cute. That's who he was. Okay, so we're going to try to catch up on them as the pictures slide past us. But my pros, well, let's just get off my cons. Because, now, you know, Candy can become the next uh, Miss Vanderpump. Uh, I don't know what we named Candy. But she can actually do well with this show and get several seasons. And, you know, she don't really be the showcasing part. She need to play it just like she's played it in season one. Let her staff interact and let us see how Candy had got these people in the first place, okay? Because Centrica wouldn't have been my first pick, but she's pretty, she's young, but somebody other than these women right here, because they'll probably would fire her and tell her, uh uh, she ain't from good stock, let her go, okay? She bring it down to place. If we would have had Aunt Bertha give us that rendition or Aunt Nora. <laughs> Okay, because uh, Mama Joyce ain't going to be uh, too fit to be tired with any of them anyway. She's going to speak her mind and keep it rolling. But Candy does have magic when it comes to enlisting her aunts and her mother in this uh, situation of having a restaurant named after them. Um, but that guy right here, his name is Philip. He's the general manager. He's a little arrogant. He's a little stick in the mud. Don't seem like he know how to relax. He might be kind of constipated, to tell you the truth. <laughs> he need to take a laxative and chill. But I'm sure Candy gets in his ass later on down. Because I did see a little preview where they had a little tiff and tap. I mean, he coming in like, he's, you know, he was something over there. Probably the same thing over at the Steak and Blaze uh, restaurant or whatnot. Um, and she wanted him to come over because she liked the structure he built over there. And she was thinking he could probably do the same thing at the uh, OLG restaurants. But. And I had to pause on that one. Because I was really. So I think she's going to be talking to Philip next time. Maybe the next see, uh, next episode. Where she kind of gets in his ass about who is employing who. Because I think he's just really, really, really too arrogant. 
and I don't like I said that's Todd must be Todd friend or something because him and Todd kind of cut from the same cloth he agrees with everything Philip says does and tries to uh implement which eh, like I said I would have got rid of his ass from the first beginning I don't care how he was doing and then I kind of wonder why you had to get rid of so many general managers or how why so many general managers were leaving your behind candy what's going over there on the OLG front now of course we know five years ago the OLG was established um and they've been rocking ever since then Todd still, he loves stick in the mud, kind of have the same demeanor and characteristics as Philip. You know, he wants to fire everybody. He, if they ain't up to his par, uh, which the bar, bar set real low for Todd, because I'm still trying to find where his track trailer went. You know, his little uh, semi truck he was going to be running hauls for or whatever, where that went. And I'm still looking uh, for that to come into fruition because. I, I just don't know. Only thing I see Todd doing is barking orders and not paying attention to what he's damn saying. You know, because they can pretty much bark the same orders back at his ass. Because they already know who run the pants, who, who wear the pants, or who run the show over there in the Tucker Burr's uh, camp. And he might well just sit his ass down and, and just smile and look pretty like we be trying to tell Cynthia half the time. But he be want to say what he want to say and then Candy let him say it. And she looks at him like, where the hell did I pick you up from, okay? Uh, and that's pretty much why I got it. And I was like, get, his, get in his ass, Candy, get in his ass. But it just is what it is, okay? Uh, family over everything. Family is over everything. But, um, yes, um, uh, let me see. Got Don Juan, I talked about him. Uh, him and Todd look like they still disagree on many things. And he's only there. He's made it very clear, uh, when she had her, uh, other little spinoff shows that she's there for Candy. He has pro uh, proven himself to Candy. He has been with her since day one. And she had not missed the beat when it comes to the revenue. So it doesn't matter what Todd may say against or for Don Juan. Don Juan is going to be kept. Even if Todd has to, you know, go on into the sunset and she had to release him from being her husband. She ain't getting rid of Don Juan. Okay. And I can fully agree with it because if he's been there from day one and he's been showing it and proving and your revenue stream keeps going up and he's keeping you uh, being booked and busy. Yes, 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 yes. You don't have to sleep with him. You just make sure he does what he needs to do and deserves the salary that I'm sure you're paying him expeditiously okay um then like i said uh let's see we got shandrika she's the hostess she's the one with the most giving us the most attitude and we just don't know what to do with her we know she is college educated so technically she's probably here just to get into the hollywood scene and candy would be the right one to put her in the field of acting or I don't know, being on a set or just rubbing heads with the big dogs and celebrity. She know Candy is her ticket to getting there. Uh, but Candy says she's been there for a while and she's been tried and true. And she has her ways of seeing things. But, you know, it seems like Candy whole staff is, is uh, in their 30s or in their 20s. Uh, late 20s or early 20s. And they're still learning. And um, she's learning along right with them because she's never had any um background in running a restaurant or partaking in owning a restaurant so everybody's learning and, and trying to navigate the waters of that so uh shandrika is one to watch out for she gives me nothing but chuckles chuckles and <laughs> i'll be like where the hell y'all get this girl from you know what i'm saying she is good for TV. Uh, she can go to bats with the best of them. And she doesn't um, back down. But she does got to find herself in this uh, servitude mode. And she's got to learn how to definitely take constructive criticism and orders and follow them through to the letter. Even though I feel Todd and Philip. That. The way they speak, their tone uh, of approach, or how they want to get a situation 
resolve is piss poor. You know how they used to say you get more with honey than you can with vinegar. And they need to really understand that adage and go forward with that. Because when you're barking out orders and you have this uh, no sense attitude, uh, that's not going to get you very far. And it's not going to make a very conducive uh, workplace. You know what I'm saying? When you feel like you need to come in and you're going to make a difference, but you also want to let your hair down. You know what I'm saying? Because you're going to be mixing and mingle with a lot of different Southern people out there. And uh, that's one thing Southern folks do. They like hospitality. Now, for those who come from the North, they may not know too much about that. But in the South, we greet, we hug, we laugh, we chickle, and we like good damn food, okay? Everything that's fried, died, and laid to the side, okay? We want that. We want everything the doctors tell us not to have. But you know what? My people, uh, meaning my, my biological family and my family before that and that and that, you know, going down the lineages and stuff. Ain't nothing hurt nobody with no fried chicken, no eggs, no bacon, no no uh, pork chops and all that stuff. Our family members were living a lot. I think it's more so how they growing this food now and the pesticides they use that's causing all this cancer and this, that, and the third. Because I tell you, ain't no alcohol hurt my family back in the day, okay? Ain't no fried food hurt or hurt them or gave them any kind of health issues but it just is what it is when you're from the south that's what we do we fry died and laid it to the side ain't nothing coming up him baked broad and steamed all right we like it all fried we like our fat and that's about that okay well moving on we got dominique um dom is the girl that loves the manager of olg they feeling each other and i'm sure they're gonna hit the sheets anytime soon but we always know you can't have romance on the job because nine times out of ten when shit hit the fan they bring it into work and of course we will have a portion scene where everybody's throwing plates knives tables and chairs okay <laughs> so we really don't really don't encourage uh, the romance on the job. So we'll just see what develops between those two. All right, but that's Shantrika up there, hostess at OLG, and that's Mr. Rashad. Richard, he's over there at Steak and Blaze, a Blaze and Steakhouse, and they definitely have two things in common. They like, they love themselves, and they love to show people that they love themselves. And, um, we haven't got to see Melvin. Melvin is Candy's uh, cousin. I think she takes care of him financially. Uh, I think he had a problem in his past with his family members or whatnot. I don't know if they did or not. But she's been doing a damn good job trying to keep him on straight and narrow. And um, that's Patrick. We haven't seen him in this episode either. But he, I'm sure they're coming up. Uh, we didn't see him at all. But we did see Melvin. Uh, where he was, the, the lights head went off in the kitchen or the establishment. And uh, Todd is too cheap to buy a generator because Ken said it has come up many, many, many times. That whole area just goes out at the whim of a hat, you know, and it kind of stops productivity in the area and especially affecting their restaurant. And so, uh, Todd, I feel like you don't need it. It happens here and there. But I'm like, you ain't got the money, Todd. We, we need to lean to Candace's understanding and come on and buy that generator so people can still eat, greet, and be merry. Okay? At the establishment. Because damn right, if I ain't got my food or it just came in and the lights are out now, I don't plan on paying your bill. Uh, because I don't have to eat it. You can take it back. Either way, it's going to go in the trash. So it might well go in my stomach. And I talk about your food in a nice way. And then you can comp this meal. And I'll see you next time. Okay, that's how I would have played it. But this uh, joker, this ninja called Philip, he's like, don't let nobody leave. Like, you're going to hold people hostage. You really going to hold people hostage, Philip? Then you take over that role. You make sure everybody get paid. Oh, they pay their bill and we're gonna leave that all up to you because i ain't going up to nobody that's sitting in a hot ass restaurant 
fanning themselves like they're in church and been there for three hours and they're ready to go off. Okay? You try to get the money from them. Okay? And that's how I would have played that situation. He's too cold. He's too aggressive. And he's damn right rude. Uh, and that's Philip who we're talking about. Um, and, you know, him and Shandrika got into it the very first part of the show. And I knew which way it was going to flow. And I would have just told her. Oh, uh, I would uh, told me told Candy. Uh, let me just take the day off because my mentality is not acting right. As Philip is coming off on me in the wrong manner. And if I was Candy, I would have sent both of them home and told them to get their attitudes together. And when they come back, hopefully it's friendly and it can be professionally. Uh, found that they both can work together because I need a hostess and I need a GM but I don't need the attitude from either one of them because it's not conducive to a good working relationship all right okay uh let's see candy should have had a man oh yeah and i, I kind of didn't like the way candy had had the meeting i guess the first opening of the restaurant i'm thinking it may not have been uh but she want to have a meeting where she brings in Philip and let the staff know that he's the new GM. He's going to be making all the moves and all the decisions and it's not going to be uh, they talk to Don Juan anymore or send her emails about what's going on. Uh, they're going to have to deal with him. And I'm like, Candy, that was piss poor. You don't have a meeting where things can get a little out of hand. People can get into their feelings for the negative uh, on the day of opening. That should have been something that they did after work or uh at least uh three or four hours prior to opening or oh, hell send the shit in an email and hopefully everybody got it and uh when you go over the directions one hour before it's time to open you can see if everybody got it good and they're on board with what was needed to be said but i wouldn't have had no kind of meeting introducing no gm with him having an attitude and you know your staff gonna have an attitude because you know them you've been with them for a while you know they don't take good to change but change is good as long as it's given in a constructive manner and it's implemented in a kosher manner then we all can see eye to eye and try to do what we need to do to make our paychecks all right um and then Candy had a smart idea. I'm like, Kaleidoscope, ain't that something that the brat and Big Judy, uh, Big Booty Judy got going on? I thought her kids' uh, products was named Kaleidoscope, her brand, Kaleidoscope. But Candy said, like, she have a hairline product. I was like, Dad, you're going to be competing against uh, your baby sister or your older sister, Kenyon boy? I don't know. But that was a shock when I saw the commercial after her show had went off um you know so they can pay their spot the sponsors can get paid um candy was introducing her hairline products and it's called kaleidoscope don't quite sure know where it was because i wasn't expecting that advertisement to come up but i'm pretty sure it's in some um f not pharmacy but drug store or it might be in walmart or something like that check it out google it and y'all can support all right um let me see. Come oh, on, let me see. Okay, okay, okay. we got Shandrika. She clashed with Philip. So we, we really know who Philip is. And hopefully he'll be better as the um, season progress. Okay, then we had a scene where Candy go visit her aunt Nora and um, the other two sisters. Or, well, the other uh, 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 aunt is there and uh, her mother's there. They're over at um, Aunt Nora's house. Okay, and they're can't even want to interview them. I'm like, girl, why the hell are you putting your your folks out in the summer? I mean, out of the the yard. Now you could have had a screen in porch or, or built, uh, Miss Nora or your aunt a screen in porch. Y'all go out there and have lemonade or whatever beverage of your choice, and y'all can discuss the comments and goings on what they feel about the style at the OLG. All right, and my thing is, damn, candy, they they you know. They damn got two feet in the grave, pretty much. But hell, you want to know what they feel about. Because they're going to damn tell you, you know. Because when they hit 60, 70, and 80, they tell you what's on their mind. And they don't sugarcoat shit, okay. So pretty much, they had a uh, unanimous uh, decision or meetings on the mind that none of Candy 
uh, workers were about shit. <laughs> they couldn't think of one person that they liked that they could give a good review on. So that's uh, that's sad. That's sad. But like I said, they be telling the honest truth. Just like you have a child uh, and all their wits and wiles, what they think about something, they just give you they, they cold-hearted truth for answer. Hey, it's out the mouth of babes. They telling the truth. Okay, so Aunt Bertha, Aunt Nora, and uh, Mama Choice was like, not nah, none of them uh, know what the hell they doing. They don't want to be there. They talk about you behind your back. That's what Mama Choice said. But Aunt Nora and Aunt Bertha, they were like, they ain't, they, they, ain't, they ain't right. They ain't right, girl. And um, that was funny. I, I liked it, that chuckle they had. Uh, let me see. Then Mama Joyce was talking about she don't argue with people and can't have to check her mama and say, Mama, don't lie like that. Don't don't even go there. And they played some scenes where Mama Joyce was going off on people and arguing with them and carrying on and stuff like that. I said, well, Candace, she's 72 hell. She might be absent-minded a little here and there. Uh, <laughs> just give her to what she gives, and that's pretty much it. You know, the uh, Alzheimer's and dementia do try to sneak up on them at that age, okay? So give her a little break. I don't even really let Mama Joyce worry me anymore. I kind of take her in stride. Uh, because she definitely can speak her mind now. She pretty much deserves to. So let her have it. Let her have it. Then Candy showed us Tori. He was our event manager or something like that. Then they had brother trying to do other things. And he said, I got to go. I'm only an event planner. I'm not a magician. <laughs> so like these, these little... Uh, other jobs you trying to give to me? No, ma'am, no, son, no, Lord. I got to go. So he left for a while, but then they had this little party where they were having the old members and co workers of the uh, OLG when it first started versus the new um, staff that they have. And they were intermingling with one another. And Candy was uh, willing and wanting to bring a few of them back. Even though Todd was like, I don't know, I don't think that's a good idea, just let sleeping dogs lie. But she gave Todd that look like, I really didn't ask you for your opinion. I was just speaking it out loud, hoping you would go with it. But your opinion is not really needed, Todd Tucker. Your opinion is not needed. Okay. Then, um, let me see. What we got here? Um, Torin. Okay, I'm, I'm going to like Torian. He's the event planner. He's extra. And he's fun-loving. And, and he knows how to dress, too. All right, we got Brian. He's an ex-bartender. That's Rashad. But I don't think I have a picture of Brian. Yeah, Brian is the one that was in his little shawl thing. Uh, I do have a picture of him. Um, he's cute. Candy wants to hire him back. He brought a lot of class and fun um, to the... Um, establishment when it very first opened and she's trying to collect some of that magic and bring it back okay but um that was pretty much it i was gonna give it a um a d but i had to really think that i can't give candy no d because it ain't really about candy it's really about candy and the game all right i didn't too much care about the little um music she was playing but I guess, you know, she could have had somebody else sing it or whatever. But I, I guess she wanted to get her little wits in and, you know, get her little, you know, money paid for providing um, that little opening of a song or edition of bringing uh, the candy and the gang home. That was her vocal introduction or however you want to put it. But uh, it was cute. It was a cute look. And, you know, like I said, it's just introductory of the people that's going to be playing the major parts in the scenes to come. And, um, like I said, uh, Shandrika is the hostess with the most. It's okay. She's giving us all attitude. And uh, that's what you need. It's good television. She looks good opti optical-wise. I'm really wanting to see Melvin, what he's going to bring. He's supposed to be the kitchen manager. And um, evidently he must can cook too. And um, that's going to be interesting to see. Uh, but it, it's like the two favorites right now are the ones to watch out for is Philip, which is the director of operations. 
uh, GM manager, however you want to see him. And you got Shandrika. She's the one that is, uh, I think, from Florida. And she has her degree. I don't know what it in. What is it? What it is in? And uh, she's been down here for four years. And um, I don't know what her claim to fame is. So we'll still be watching out for her. I know Dominique. Um, she danced with Mel the Stallion, I believe. Uh, she brought her claim to fame. She's uh, really wanting. She's a dancer. That's what she, uh, is, is first. Um, and she made it very clear, I guess, to Candy when she got hired. But that's Dominique right there. She's a dancer. And she's a bartender. And um, she likes to have fun. And that's pretty much the whole age group. It's uh, mid-20s to early 30s we're looking at. And they still have life in them. And when I say life, they're still living life. They're acting like children, playing like children. But they are in adult bodies, young adult bodies, and it depends if they want to be in the restaurant business and try to pursue a career, then you're going to get them acting appropriately. But if you're just trying to be on a television show, hopefully someone will notice you and you have other alternatives uh, by being featured on the show, you're not going to be there for a long haul this is just like a stepping stone for you you like it you love it you try to learn as much you can you try to network much as you can and you move on you know so Candon really needs to look at people that want to be in the uh food industry that uh tailors themselves to um what do you call it hospitality and then she could probably have them uh with her and understand the business for a long haul but, like I said, it's trial and error. Um, people come to Atlanta because they think they're with the next Hollywood uh, scene. And we do have Tyler Perry down here and a host of other people uh, in the music industry. Well, he's in the acting industry. Um, but, you know, we do have a lot of heavy hitters in the rap industry that's down here as well. So, I guess we've become um, baby Hollywood down here. And people think it's the next best thing to come here. But if you wasn't born and raised here, you don't know about Southern hospitality. You don't know about treating people, you know, like you want to be treated. So, when you do find a uh, native uh, Georgian, it's a treat. Okay? And it's a different uh, feel you're going to get when you intermingle or interact with them. Okay, but that's all I had, y'all, for Candy and the g -g gang. All right, they're gonna drive her c -c -c crazy if she let them. But I do like her personality when it comes to trying to understand people where they're at at that age that she's dealing with them. And Todd tends to forget, you know, everything is not about business. You gotta learn how to stroke people's egos, you gotta learn how to mature them into what you're wanting them to be if it's for the long haul and if it's what something they want uh to believe in which is your dream it's not their dream because half the time they're just there to get a paycheck and to um be able to meet their cost of living uh financial bills you know that's why they there it's for the paycheck they give it what they got and they move on but um I don't like Todd's philosophy on how he feels people need to act and be correct and all this, that, and the third. You got to understand an individual people in general before you can mandate what you want from them. Because you need them just as much as they need you. It's a, you know, it's a mutual contract that you in, enter into. Now, whether they're going to go to bats for you and be there for you, nah, not necessarily. Unless you're stroking their ego and you're giving them more perks than you would probably want to. But it is what it is. It was a cute little open introductory to what we can expect. But those are the, the heavy hitters you're going to want to watch out for. For your entertainment enjoyment. And that's Dominique, the bartender. Chantrika, the hostess. Uh, Torin, the event platter they're bringing back. We're going to forget about Philip because I think he needs to be replaced because he's too damn arrogant. And he has no ha-ha kiki 
in his bones in his DNA it looks like everything is just rah 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 I'm like do you have a boyfriend do you have a girlfriend are you getting any in these days are you constipated or do you need some relaxation tell us so we can help you help yourself that's all I have guys hope y'all enjoyed it I will be back next week definitely giving y'all more play by play blow blah blow give you the pros and cons of candy and the gay. all right y'all be breezy and i'll talk to y'all next time bye bye